Hi everyone, welcome to Arpita Sharma classes. We are back with the Hindu newspaper analysis and today we are starting with 16th of August 2022 ka Hindu newspaper analysis. In this lecture, we will be covering both 16th and 17th August 2022's the Hindu newspaper. So, we will cover these two dates Hindu newspaper aaj cover in this particular lecture. Mein. And don't worry, the remaining of the backlog will also be covered on our channel. Don't worry about it. Sara backlog aapka achche se cover hoga in detail because of some technical issues the lectures were uh, getting delayed but now all the technical issues have been resolved and we are back on track so let's get started without any delay and i am sure that you must have covered the newspaper yourself this is a revisionary lecture for all of you let's get started so on page number one we have this article row over savarkar's portrait in karnataka so we are going to study about who was veer savarkar because this particular personality is important not just for your prelims examination but for also for your GS paper 1 mains. GS paper 1 jo hai mains ka aur prelims ka jo aapka you know exam hai dono ke liye hi dono ke point of view se Veer Savarkar ye personality ke baare mein padhna bohat important hai. So do not take it very lightly okay. It's a very important historical personality that we are going to study today. He is also one of the freedom fighters of our Indian national movement. So, Veer Savarkar basically is a freedom fighter who was born on 28th May 1883 ko inka hai in Maharashtra in the place Bahagur which is near Nashik in Maharashtra and it is said that he wrote a very famous book called The History of War of Indian Independence. Basically, in this book he wrote about the guerrilla warfare tactics that the Indian soldiers used during the 1857 Sepoy Mutiny. And he also wrote another book which was a little controversial which is known as Hindutva Who is Hindu? This is the controversial one that he wrote. And when we talk about the two nation theory, it is said that Veer Savarkar also talked about the two nation theory. That is one nation belonging to Hindus, other belonging to Muslims. Now, generally it is said that he was against the Muslims. But, in you know, if we look at the history in some of the movements to fight off the Britishers, to, you know, throw them out from the country, he also took the help of the Muslim community. Now, here we say that, you know, there, there was a secret society called Abhinav Bharat Society. And it is said that this secret society was formed by Veer Savarkar only, right? We will study about this society also, don't worry. And from 1937 till 1943, that is three years before we got, four years before we got independence, he was the president of Hindu Mahasabha. So let's study about the important societies which they can ask, the UPSC can ask in your prelims examination. Abhinav Bharat Society, also known as the Young India Society. It was established by Veer Savarkar and his brother Ganesh Damodar Savarkar. These are the two brothers, Veer Sa Damodar Savarkar and then we have Vinayak Damodar Savarkar and we have Ganesh Damodar Savarkar. In 1904, both of them together established the Young India Society and it was established in Nashik where Veer Savarkar ji was born and initially the name of the society was Mitra Mela and the society was associated with revolutionaries. That is why it was a secret society. This is why it was a secret society because it was secretly revolutionaries wale, you know sabhi activists revolutionaries sab ek saath hokar plans create karte the kaise hum britishers ko bahar bhej sakte hain wapas unke desh and then we have another important during the same time period we have this important organization called india house founded by shyamji kishan verma in 1905 1904 we have this particular society young india society which is which was a secret society also known as abhinav bharat society the next year we saw the establishment of India House. Again, here Veer Savarkar ji also participated in this society. It was opened in London uh, basically to promote the nationalist views among those Indian students who were living in London, studying in, in London. Why? Because Veer Savarkar ji was of the viewpoint that Indians who are spread across the world should come together. The students should come together and fight off the Britishers. Then we have the Free Indian Society which was uh, founded by Madam Bikaji Kama and Veer Savarkar he went to London in 1906 and he founded this Free India Society. One of the founding leaders was also Madam Bikaji Kama and 
you know savarkar ji also basically uh, created the society based on the thoughts of italian nationalist gisip mazzini he also wrote a biography on mazzini so this also you have to remember he was influenced by italian nationalist so his ideals were followed by veer savarkar by establishment establishing this free india society then we have the hindu mahasabha which is also later on was, was known as akhil bharat hindu mahasabha it is one of the oldest organizations of india because it was formed in 1907 it was extended that means it was you know the time period of this hindu mahasabha was extended in 1915 and it was spread on an on an all india basis it was recognized on the all india basis pan india basis veer savarkar it is known that he was you know against the uh, you know britishers and he participated in the uh, you know basically quit in uh, basically the, all the uh, you know uh, protest against the britishers but it is said that in 1942 he opposed the quit india movement 1900 uh, you know बयालीस में इन्होंने क्विट इंडिया मूवमेंट के अगेंस्ट ये खड़े हुए थे कि भाई ये मूवमेंट नहीं चलेगा राइट सो ही वाज अरेस्टेड इन 1909 व्हाई ही वाज अरेस्टेड बिकॉज ही टुक आउट एंड ही वाज बेसिकली द चार्जेस वर दैट ही प्लान एन आर्म्ड रिवोल्ट अगेंस्ट द इंडियन काउंसिल्स एक्ट ऑफ नाइनटीन नाउ वेन यू स्टडी दी एम लक्ष्मीकांत बुक यू विल स्टडी ऑन इन दी फर्स्ट चैप्टर दी मॉडले मिंटो रिफॉर्म्स डू स्टडी दैट चैप्टर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट देन ही वॉज अरेस्टेड इन नाइनटीन फॉर इस कनेक्शन विद द रेवल्यूशनरी ग्रुप इंडिया हाउस यहां पर हमने इंडिया हाउस के बारे में भी पढ़ा था तो इसमें ये पार्टिसिपेटेड पार्टिसिपेट किया करते थे एक पार्टिसिपेंट थे इसी वजह से इनको 1910 में अरेस्ट किया गया ठीक है और ऐसा कहा गया कि इन यू नो किंग एम्पर जो ब्रिटेन के हैं उनके खिलाफ इन्होंने कॉन्स्पिरेसी रची है लंदन में जाके ये छुपकर स्टूडेंट्स को इन इग्नाइट कर रहे हैं ताकि वो ब्रिटेन के खिलाफ खड़े हो सके सो इन ऑल दीज चार्जेस ही वॉज अरेस्टेड एज वेल ही वॉज कन्विक्टेड एंड सेंटेंस टू फिफ्टी ईयर्स इंप्रिजनमेंट जिसको हम काला पानी बोलते हैं अंडमान निकोबार आइलैंड में ना एक ना छोटा सा ब्लैक प्रिजन तैयार किया गया था जहां पर सिर्फ एक छोटी सी बहुत टॉप पर विंडो हुआ करती थी पूरे रूम में और यहाँ पर बिना खाना बिना पानी दिए यहाँ पर एक इंसान को कैद कर दिया जाता था इन द डार्कनेस उसको समझ भी नहीं आता था कि दिन हो रहा है या रात तो उसे काला पानी की सजा बोलते थे एंड इट इज सेट दैट ही वेंट ऑन फास्टिंग यू नो ड्यूरिंग इज सेंटेंस एंड ही डाइड ऑन ट्वेंटी सिक्स तो इन्होंने एक तरीके से भूख खाना पीना सब त्याग दिया था और समाधि ले ली थी ही वॉज अगेंस्ट दी फॉरन गुड्स एंड यू नो ड्यूरिंग द स्वदेशी मूवमेंट ही बर्न सो मेनी फॉरन गुड्स एंड फॉरन आइटम्स ही वर्क you know on abolishment of untouchability in ratnagiri also and he used to follow atheism to wo na rationality pe chalte he used to say that i do not follow what the books dictates i follow rationality i follow experience based learning so he disapproved the orthodox hindu beliefs he also disapproved the cow worship he used to say that cow worship is superstitious but aap superstition ke chalte cheezon ki worship kar rahe ho rationality kahan hai logic kahan hai iske piche so this was his view point so he was in and you you know because of that uh, various segments of the society of the community used to uh, you know criticize him as well yahan tak point clear ho gaya aapko now i told you in the beginning of this lecture that veer savarkar ji basically was talking about a two nation theory so in his book hindutva who is a hindu he founded this theory two nation theory later on aap dekhoge muslim league ne bhi is थ्योरी को अपनाया था सो यूज टू से दैट यू नो देर देर सपोज टू बी टू नेशन हिंदूज एंड मुस्लिम एंड इन 1937 हिंदू महासभा ऑल्सो पास दिस थ्योरी एज अ रेजोल्यूशन ओके सो दिस वॉज ऑल अबाउट वीर सावरकर जी दैट यू नीड टू रिमेंबर फॉर योर प्रिलिमिनरी एग्जामिनेशन द नेक्स्ट इंपॉर्टेंट आर्टिकल इरान डिनाइज रोल बट जस्टिफाइज अटैक ऑन सलमान रश्ती now we know that last friday salman rushdie he was going to deliver a talk as a part of a lecture series but suddenly a 24 year old man stormed the stage and stabbed salman rushdie several times in the neck and in the abdomen it is said that right now he is recuperating he is you know fighting for his life now the doctors are saying that his condition is still serious but thankfully he was taken off the ventilator he is showing signs of improvement and do you know it's very lucky when once you are in on and when you know on a ventilator it's you know very very hard that the person would survive but now here the good news is that salman rushdie is surviving he is showing signs of improvement 
so here iran is saying that we are denying any role in this attack but they justified the attack on salman rushdi now what is the history or background of all of this see in 1989 now there was a fatwa and a, you know it's known as an order or a legal decree which was imposed by iran's you know head ayatullah ruhullah khomeini on salman rushdi why because he wrote a book called a novel called the satanic verses now here you know basically in 1988 salman rushdi published his fourth novel called the satanic verses and this novel was criticized by many muslims who said that this particular novel is disrespectful towards the prophet muhammad the novel uh, you know sparked a fatwa which is also known as a religious decree and here the iranian revolutionary leader ayatullah ruhullah khomeini he called for rushdi's death this led to violent protest in tehran lebanon england pakistan and even in india and it is said that in 1989 24th february 1989 12 people were killed in mumbai when police fired at protesters there were protests going on in india also against salman rushdi's book okay and india was the first country to ban this uh, novel called the satanic verses so here there are questions that uh, you know arise first is the question related to free speech and freedom of expression second is what is this fatwa so basically a fatwa is a legal decree uh, you can say it's an order you know on a point of islamic law or opinion given by a high ranking islamic religious leader or any religious authority fatwas calling for someone's death can be brought against those who are deemed to have insulted islam or the prophet to fatwa jo hote hain wo kya hote hain unke against launch kiye jate hain agar death ka fatwa nikla hai ki bhaiya is insaan ko khatam karna padega to wo order tab nikala jata hai jab ye mana jata hai ya ye prove ho jata hai ki samne wale insaan ne insult kiya islam ki ya prophet muhammad ki तो बेसिकली फतवाज इतनी जल्दी खत्म नहीं किए जा सकते या ओवरटर्न नहीं किया बहुत रेयर केस होता है जब फतवा ओवरटर्न किया जाता है ओवरटर्न मतलब वापस ले लिया गया या कैंसिल कर दिया गया एंड 33 थ्री ईयर्स आफ्टर खुमेनी डिक्लेयर रशदीज बुक प्लास्ट फेमस and there was a bounty which was put on his head in 1989 the author was stabbed repeatedly this year in 2022 now when we move ahead now from the prelims point of view you need to understand what exactly is a fatwa prelims ke perspective se to aapko ye pata hona chahiye ki fatwa kya hota hai secondly you should uh, from the perspective of paper 2 you should uh, you know uh, know your uh, you should be aware of your view points and opinion on freedom of speech so let me know in the comment section if somebody asks you about this incident and then they ask you what about freedom of speech what about freedom of expression how will you answer this question in a way which is respectful towards your own nation and towards other communities uh, you know uh, interest so let me know in the comment section ki as a diplomat how will you answer this question ek diplomat hone ke nate agar aap ek ias officer ho aaj today let's say you are an ias officer okay which you soon will become so if somebody asks you and this kind of case has happened so if somebody asks you what's your opinion on it ठीक है मान लो आप मीडिया में बाहर निकले आपसे किसी ने पूछा आपका क्या ओपिनियन है तो आप क्या आंसर देंगे लेट मी नो इन द कमेंट सेक्शन ओके एंड डोंट राइट एन आंसर टू इम्प्रेस एनीबॉडी आपको अपने आपके आपकी क्या व्यू पॉइंट है व्हाट्स योर ओन ओपिनियन योर रॉ ओपिनियन योर रॉ व्यू पॉइंट लेट मी नो इन द कॉमेंट सेक्शन ओके now the satanic verses the fourth book that salman rushdi wrote depicted prophet muhammad and quran in a manner that you know basically drew criticism from the muslim community leaders and that is why a bounty was offered to anyone who would kill him who would kill or murder or execute salman rushdi so that is why he was in hiding for 9 years and this novel was first banned in india now if there's a question which indian author was named as companion of honor by united kingdom Salman Rushdie, Zafar Rushdie, Arundhati Roy, R. K. Narayan. So, what will be your answer? They go. Zafar Rushdie is the son of Salman Rushdie. Okay. Correct answer here would be A. Correct answer. Your answer is A. So, Salman Rushdie ko companion of honor ka bhi uh, you know tag diya gaya hai United Kingdom ke dwara. All right. Now, in the PDF, you will see these are some important books uh, and some prizes that have been mentioned uh, that Salman Rushdie wrote and received. so please go through this in the pdf is ke prelims ke perspective se purely bahut important point hai
The next important article, country facing twin challenges of corruption and nepotism, says Prime Minister. So, here we have 76th Independence Day, we have celebrated in India, you know, को आजाद हुए 75 इयर्स हो गए ये इंडिपेंडेंस डे 76th वाला था जो हमने सेलिब्रेट किया है सो प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी टॉक्ड अबाउट फाइव रेजोल्यूशंस फॉर इंडियंस नाउ यू मस्ट बी वंडरिंग मैम व्हाई वी आर स्टार्टिंग द स्पीच ऑफ प्राइम मिनिस्टर राइट व्हाई इज इट इंपॉर्टेंट इट्स इंपॉर्टेंट फ्रॉम द पर्सपेक्टिव ऑफ एसे राइटिंग यू कैन हाईलाइट एंड कोट प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदीज आइडियाज एंड रेजोल्यूशंस यू कैन यूज दीज रेजोल्यूशंस इन योर एसे पेपर यू कैन यूज दीज रेजोल्यूशंस इन योर एथिक्स पेपर या करप्शन और नेपोटिज्म या बात की गई है और आजकल नेपोटिज्म के बारे में काफी कुछ चल रहा है सो एथिक्स पेपर में आपके ये क्वेश्चन आ सकता है यू कैन कोट हिज यू नो रेजोल्यूशन इन योर ड्यूरिंग योर इंटरव्यू एज वेल सो मेक श्योर दैट यू गो थ्रू हिज स्पीच सो वी आर गोइंग टू हियर स्टडी द हाइलाइटेड पॉइंट्स ऑफ हिज स्पीच ही टॉक्ड अबाउट द ट्विन चैलेंजेस दैट इंडिया इज फेस इंडिया इज फेसिंग राइट नाउ करप्शन एंड नेपोटिज्म सेकंडली ही टॉक्ड अबाउट द फाइव रेजोल्यूशंस फॉर इंडियंस फाइव ओथ और रेजोल्यूशंस दैट यू शुड टेक फर्स्ट इज 100% freedom from slavery 100% azadi from gulami slavery ko har tarike se from your mindset from your lifestyle you need to abolish it not just for yourself for others as well and second is every indian should focus on developing the country the hatred the judgment the comparison you should drop it all the negativity drop it all फोकस ऑन डिवेलपिंग योर नेशन आपका फोकस एक ही जगह होना चाहिए कि कैसे अपने देश को आगे बढ़ाना है ये जलना भुनना कंपेयर करना हेट क्रिएट करना क्रिटिसाइज करना जज करना ये सब ड्रॉप कर दो आप थर्ड टेक प्राइड इन इंडियन हेरिटेज आप अपने कल्चर अपने हेरिटेज अपनी डायवर्सिटी में प्राउड फील करो टेक प्राइड इन इट इन यू नो मेंटेन योर हेरिटेज प्रोटेक्ट योर हेरिटेज Fourth is ensuring importance is given to unity and integrity, and every citizen should be responsible. Now he is not saying that just protect your heritage. You should also be responsible. ऐसा नहीं है कि भाई हमने तो अपना काम कर दिया. अगर आप देख रहे हो आपके सामने कुछ गलत हो रहा है, तो उसके खिलाफ उठो, उसको correct करो, solution solution oriented रहो. ठीक है? All these things are really important. Removing any trace of colonial mindset, you need to go back to your Hindu. you know heritage culture mindset your traditions kisi bhi tarike ka colonial mindset colonial you know dimag opinion view aapko apne apne country se aur apne dimag se nikalna hai in no part of our mind or heart should there be any ounce of slavery or inclination towards the colonial mindset that you have to remember so these were the five very important and very golden resolutions for indians that we need to adopt you know which prime minister modi highlighted in his speech the next important article tripura brew refugees celebrate independence day in their new settlements here brew refugees ke bare mein padhna bahut important hai for prelims and gs paper 2 Now, when it comes to brew refugees, ये आपके prelims के लिए काफी important है because the brew or riang is a community which is indigenous to northeast India. Basically, they live in areas of Tripura, Mizoram, and Assam. And in Tripura, they are known as the PVTG, that is particularly vulnerable tribal group. ये कुछ important aspects हैं इस tribe के जो आपको पढ़ने हैं, याद रखने हैं prelims के perspective से. And do you know that in 2020 there was a agreement which was signed among the center, Mizoram government, Tripura government, and uh, you know the Mizoram Brew Displaced Peoples Forum, which uh, basically sought to end the 22 year old brew refugee crisis. तो कहाँ पर रहेंगे? क्या इनकी you know location रहेगी? कहाँ पर ये सर्वाइव करेंगे? इसके ऊपर काफी problems थे, काफी questions थे. Politics was going on, and that is why this agreement was signed. It said that in Mizoram ना they have been targeted a lot because the Mizoram you know in certain communities in Mizoram they do not consider brew refugees as their own people, right? And that is why they used to you know uh, uh, threaten them to leave their state etc. And that is why 1997. There were ethnic clashes that took place. Nearly 37,000 brew people, tribal people, they fled, okay, in from the districts of Mizoram, and they came and they entered into the areas of Tripura. And यहाँ पर उन्होंने अपना camp वगैरह सब establish कर लिया था. And that is why this agreement was signed with the center and Tripura and Mizoram government in order to, you know, uh, make the, uh, you know, community settle at one place. 
so the question is who are the brus basically they are referred as riangs they are spread in the areas of tripura assam manipur and mizoram and basically tripura and mizoram mein yahan par problem chal rahi hai in tripura they are recognized as the particularly vulnerable tribal group and mizoram they have been targeted because the people of mizoram they do not consider the bru tribal community as their own okay coming on to a very important and very interesting page this is my favorite page in the hindu newspaper it's the quiz section and it's been a daily there are five questions that they ask and please remember it upsc is very unpredictable and hindu newspaper is the hindu and the indian express newspaper are their favorite newspapers and the hindu newspaper is asking five questions as quizzes every day so upsc is keeping a lookout on the hindu newspaper so please solve these quiz questions every day today i am going to solve it question 1 is saying out of the 40 world heritage sites located in india one site is a mixed type what is a what is it a mix of and which is the one mixed type site in india in which state is it located so here the very important very easy answer to this very important question is kanchenjunga national park where is it it is located in sikkim it is india's first mixed world heritage site why because there are different kind of species mixed species mammals birds plants which are found here that is why it is known as the mixed type yahan par koi ek species famous nahi hai ya plants mammals birds sab milenge aapko theek hai so this is the answer to question 1 let's go to question 2 when was the first stamp of independent india issued what is the stamp there is a slogan mentioned on the stamp what is it and where is it located so the stamp the first stamp of independent india was issued on 21st november 1947 and it shows the indian flag with the slogan called jai hind long live india and where is it located on the top right hand corner theek hai then question 3 this question is kind of a homework question for all, all of you i'll so, solve one part of this question the question says rbi of india issued a series of denomination of coins in 2004 7 11 and 19 name all the four types of series so i'll name the series which was launched in 2004 it was a 1 rupee coin which was launched and the series was unity in diversity ab 2007 11 and 19 mein kaun si series launch hui thi ye aapko mujhe batana hai comment section mein all right question 4 is saying this this is a card game a type of playing card that is often associated with persia and india these cards are circular or rectangular and traditionally hand painted by artisans these cards also have a gi tag so name the cards and where is it found so basically it's famous in odisha and the name is ganjifa or ganjapa or ganajafa this is the name of the card Now here fifth question it's a serpentine dragon god associated with the state of Manipur what is it called it is called pakhangba okay this is the answer so this was your quiz for today ab ye aapko third question na mujhe answer karna hai comment section mein all right very interesting na please make a note see make a separate But, you know thin little notebook for these kind of quizzes and write you know take a cut out of this quiz on page 1 and then stick it in your register and then write the answers and then revise it every sunday it's going to help you a lot in your prelims examination next important article fundamental duties key to social transformation so here supreme court mein kaha gaya hai chief justice of india has said that fundamental duties in the constitution are not merely to serve a pedantic or technical purpose they are meant to guide right citizens engineer a social transformation so basically he is saying fundamental duties are not here to just say what your duties are no it's basically they were basically created to bring about a major transformation in the you know transformation in the society and do you know that fundamental duties are non justiciable in nature just like the dpsp the idea behind fundamental duties was taken from the constitution of ussr and it was incorporated in part 4a by 42nd constitutional amendment act of 1976 very important point ye aapka prelims ke liye important hai and they were recommended by the swaran singh committee okay so fundamental rights basically is a kind of reminder for all of us we enjoy our rights but also you know we cannot just take and take from the nation we have to give back also in spirituality it is also said do not just focus on taking from the nature give back to the nature that is why we do so many uh, you know uh, charities 
Why? Because we cannot just survive by taking from the nature. In that case, everything will deplete. We need to give it back. Same way, if you are enjoying the rights from the constitution, you also should be quite conscious of your duties, what you should give back to the country. Okay. And do you know that Japanese constitution is one of the other democratic nations which have a provision related to duties of the citizens, just like India. That you have to remember. But fundamental duties only are applied to the citizens. That, that is also important. All right. Then we have Swaran Singh Committee. You know that fundamental duties were established on the recommendations of Swaran Singh Committee. But there were certain recommendations by Swaran Singh Committee which were not accepted. They were rejected. For example, the first such recommendation was that parliament may provide for any penalty for failure to stick to any fundamental duty. So if a you know, person is not sticking to one of these fundamental duties, then he may be, he may be, or she may be penal, penalized. Second, no law imposing such penalty could be questioned in court. Aisi penalty impose karne wala koi bhi law jo banayenge, usko aap court mein question nahi kar sakte. And duty to pay tax should be also be a fundamental duty. So all these three recommendations were rejected because basically court thought that we should not impose something forcibly on people. People should be conscious and aware of their duties. Dharam ko aap kisi pe force nahi kar sakte. You cannot force a son to be a good son. That is his duty to be a good son, right? So that was the, you know, reason why these three recommendations were rejected. So, to, so today what you need to do is go to M. Lakshmikant and study the chapter on fundamental duties, okay? Coming on to the next important article, clinical trial for Bharat Biotech's intranasal vaccine is completed. So what exactly this intranasal vaccine? Basically, it is the route is through your nose. The vaccines are usually given through different routes with the most common being injectable shots. Jo aapke muscle mein, arms mein inject kiya jata hai. Theke? Or the tissue just between the skin and the muscle, which is known as subcutaneous. This is very important. Intramuscular vaccines are those which are injectable shots, which are delivered directly into the muscles. And subcutaneous vaccines are delivered on the tissue, which is just between the skin and the muscle. Okay. Other routes of delivery is through the nasal route, through the nose. And that is known as the intranasal vaccine. Coming on to the next important article, 3D printed cornea put to test in a rabbit. Do you know that in 2017, a question came on 3D printing, right? Yereko pre-YQ a question hai. So do not ignore this article. Okay. 3D printing, let's answer this question. Has applications in which of the following? Preparation of confectionery items. Yes, cake vagera mein aapki photos aati hai na lagi hui. Right, on cakes you see, you know, the photos are added on the cakes that you cut. So that is also case of 3D printing. One is correct. If one is correct, B will be, uh, you know, removed. So yaha par ab next pe aate hai. Manufacture of bionic ears. Dekh ro aap yaha par cornea, uh, 3D printed cornea hai, jo rabbit mein lagaya gaya hai. So second is also correct. Second correct hai, to C hat jayega aapka, A hat jayega. And after removing first two, you get the correct answer. Okay, this is called elimination method. This is called chalaki se prelims nikalna. This is called smartly clearing the prelims examination. Elimination method. Okay, wherein by looking at the points, you can eliminate the options. So, you have correct answer hai D. So, here, which is from the Hyderabad, have 3D printed a cornea and transplanted it into a rabbit's. Corneal damage is the leading cause of blindness worldwide. So, if this kind of technology and, you know, experiment is successful on a wider range, it, it will be very, very helpful for the humans as well. So what exactly is 3D printing? It is also known as additive manufacturing. It's a process of joining materials to make objects from 3D model data, usually layer upon layer. ठीक है तो थ्री डायमेंशनल सॉलिड ऑब्जेक्ट्स बनाए जाते हैं डिजिटल फाइल से इसको हम थ्री प्रिंटिंग बोलते हैं ये सब्ट्रैक्टिव मैन्युफैक्चरिंग का बिल्कुल ऑपोजिट है ये ठीक है सब्ट्रैक्टिव मैन्युफैक्चरिंग में लेयर्स रिमूव किए जाते हैं थ्री प्रिंटिंग में लेयर्स ऐड किए जाते हैं एंड द फर्स्ट वर्किंग थ्री प्रिंटर वॉज क्रिएटेड इन नाइनटीन बाई चार्ल्स डब्ल्यू हल ऑफ थ्री सिस्टम्स कॉर्पोरेशन Okay, and the machine's name was Terolithography Apparatus. Do you uh, know about a very famous Amazon ki web series, Amazon Prime ki web series, it is also on Netflix, it's known as The Good Doctor. 
okay there is an autistic doctor in this series who is very intelligent and he solves the cases very very you know he treats the patients very uh, geniusly excellently and here also a 3d printing technology was talked about in this good doctor series to isme na ek heart ka 3d printing karne ki koshish ki gayi thi so through this series also you can learn a lot about the coming on to the next important article this could now this article says african cheetah still stuck in transit so i told you in the previous hindu analysis lectures about the translocation project uh, of uh, undergoing uh, recently between uh, africa and india for the cheetahs basically cheetahs have been extinct in india since 1952 country's last spotted cheetah died in 1947 that too in chatisgarh now when we talk about cheetah relocation in india it's coming from south africa and namibia okay and it will be you know put into the kuno palpur uh, you know park which is in madhya pradesh that you have to remember ye aapko yaad rakhna hai kuno national park is in madhya pradesh it is one of the most unique destination for all wildlife lovers and enthusiasts yahan par bahut healthy population pai jati hai sambar ki chinkara ki cattle ki wild pig ki nilgiri ki now the cheetahs are also getting you know introduced here now when we talk about the african cheetahs ye abhi delay ho raha hai inka thoda sa transit को रोक लिया गया है एफ्रीकन चीता साइंटिफिक नेम इज एसिनोनिक जिबैटिस दे आर स्लाइटली ब्राउनिश एंड गोल्डनिश इन स्किन एंड आईसी एंड रेड लिस्ट में ये वल्नरेबल हैं एंड इन दी वाइल्ड लाइफ प्रोटेक्शन एक्ट दे आर अंडर दे आर प्रोटेक्टेड अंडर स्केड्यूल टू ओके पॉइंट क्लियर हो गया यहां तक दिस इज इंपॉर्टेंट नाउ यू मस्ट बी वंडरिंग मैम व्हाई यू नो द चीतास वर एक्सटिंक्ट व्हाट आर द थ्रेट्स you know on the population of cheetahs basically wohi man made conflict ho jata hai human and animal conflict illegal trafficking deforestation then the climate is changing in india another important article on page 1 talaq e hasan is not so improper says supreme court supreme court has said that you know it has observed that muslim personal law practice of talaq e hasan is not so improper now what is talaq e hasan basically it is a kind of divorce ओके डिवोर्स की प्रैक्टिस होती है उसी उसमें से एक तरीका है तलाक की हसन का विच इज प्रोनाउंस्ड विद अ गैप ऑफ एटलीस्ट वन मंथ और वन मेंस्ट्रुअल साइकिल सो एवरी मंथ यू विल से तलाक वंस तो ऐसे थ्री मंथ्स आप तलाक बोलोगे और फाइनली तलाक हो जाएगा वंस इन अ मंथ थ्री टाइम्स इफ यू से तलाक टू योर वुमेन देन द कपल विल बी डिवोर्स्ड ठीक है अनदर इंपॉर्टेंट हेयर यू नो कंडीशन इन तलाक के हसन इज दैट नो डाइवोर्स कैन बी एडमिनिस्ट्रेड व्हेन द वुमेन इज अंडर गोइंग हर मेंस्ट्रुअल menstrual cycle agar women pregnant hai aur she is pregnant or going her uh, you know menstrual cycle during that time you cannot divorce your women your wife okay and only a single revocable divorce takes place through the first pronouncement of talaq e hasan it is revocable so it has an option of reapproachment okay ek aapne single talaq bola hai ek month mein to ye nahi ki tabhi alag ho gaye aap tab bhi couple ek sath rahega kyunki condition yahi hai na ki 3 mahine mein ek bar aapko bolna hai theek hai Uh, मतलब तीन हर महीने में आपको तीन महीने में तीन बार बेसिकली इंडिविजुअली आपको एक बार बोलना है वन ईच इन वन मंथ ओके तो एंड यू नो एट द एंड ऑफ दिस मंथ द हस्बैंड हैज टू प्रोनाउंस डिवोर्स फॉर सेकंड टाइम नाउ दिस विल बी रेवोकेबल ठीक है एंड द कपल मे रिज्यूम देयर कॉन्जुगल रिलेशनशिप ऑल्सो एनी टाइम ये भी कैंसलेबल है बट इफ द थर्ड प्रोनाउंसमेंट इज मेड एटलीस्ट यू नो आफ्टर वन मेन्स्ट्रल साइकिल देन इट विल बी नॉन रेवोकेबल मतलब फिर तो डायवोर्स हो ही गया ये कैंसिल नहीं किया जा सकता तो इसमें ना दो पीरियड दो मंथ्स का टाइम मिलता है कि कपल देख सकता है कि इनकी कंपैटिबिलिटी है या नहीं या जो भी लड़ाई झगड़ा है वो खत्म करके वो एक साथ पैचअप कर सकते हैं नाउ देर आर अदर ऑप्शन नाउ देर इज वन ऑप्शन फॉर वेमेन ऑल्सो विच इज नोन एज खुला वेमेन गिव समिंग टू द मैन इन रिटर्न फॉर अनलिंग द मैरिज दिस प्रोसीजर टू गिव डिवोर्स बाई कुरान इज गिवन टू वेमेन ये वेमेन के लिए है प्रोसीजर ये पॉइंट आपको याद रखना है ऑल राइट right. so these are the important procedures that you need to remember for your preliminary examination so this was all for today i hope you enjoyed this lecture ummeed karti hu aapko ye lecture acha laga hoga so if you really enjoyed it do let me know in the comment section if you enjoy this kind of 